pumpkins, or should I say witches, because today is one of my favorite videos of the year, and that is our September TBR, which if you have been around my channel for a while, then you will know that for September, I always like to read witchy and magical books. So today I have a TBR for you, a list of books to be read. Actually, two of them I've already read, so. <laughs> but this was my TBR at the beginning of September. It is now a third of the way into September, so you can imagine that I've already started reading these. But I wanted to share them with you anyway, in case there were any that you wanted to add to your TBR for this autumn Halloween season. So yeah, we're just gonna go through all of the books on my witchy September TBR. I can't wait to share them with you. Welcome back to The House Beyond the Hedge. Okay, so I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six books on this TBR, and actually I have a couple others that are on my personal TBR for September, but I have already mentioned them in past videos. I just never got around to reading them, so those were added to this TBR as well, but I probably won't share them again since I had already shared them in previous TBR videos. But I have six today, and they are all witchy or magical themed. So I always like to do this in September. I don't know why, I just love to read witchy books in September. It just feels like the season for witches, for practical magic. It's my birthday season and I love witchy stuff. So yeah, it just seems like the perfect theme. And you know I love a theme for a TBR. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with the two that I've already read <laughs> and then we'll move on to the ones that I haven't read yet. I think we're gonna start with this book. It's called The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. It really has such a magical cover. I really love the cover of this. It's kind of like a bluish, it's hard to tell on camera, and then just this reflective silver foiling is so, so pretty. And I picked this one up because of the YouTube channel Pumpkin and Gray. I will leave the link to her channel down below. If you follow me and you like Halloween content, you should definitely follow her. She has really great Halloween content and a lot of it. She's been putting out so much content this year. I feel like she's been working so hard and it's amazing. So definitely go check out her channel. But the reason I picked this up is because she recommended it multiple times. And I can't remember if it was in YouTube videos or on her Instagram, but I just remember seeing her post about this book multiple times and saying that she just loved it, thought it was great. And so it was already on my list of books that I wanted to read sometime. And then when I was going through sort of my giant list of books that I keep, basically I keep a Amazon wish list of all the books that I wanna read just so I can easily refer to them. It's basically just like, instead of a notes app or something, I just keep like an Amazon wish list. And so I was going through my giant wish list to pick out which books for this season. And so I started looking at this one because it was on there because she had mentioned it. And then I saw that it takes place in Oregon, which is the state that I live in and am from. And I was very excited about that. It takes place in a little coastal town in Oregon, which, if you've been to the Oregon coast, you know it is very like moody and rugged and perfect for a witchy curse situation. So I decided to pick this one up. And like I said, I have read it and she was not wrong. This book does not disappoint. It was so, so good. I love the setting. I love the mood of it. It's kind of a tragic love story a little bit. I feel like that doesn't give too much away. But if you love romance, tragic romance, witchy stuff and curses, it's not really actual witches, at least the women that the book is sort of based on keep saying they're not witches. But there is a curse, essentially, let me back up. Essentially, this little town on the Oregon coast, back in the day, these three sisters moved to the town, but they were very vibrant and out there for the time, and they owned a perfume shop, and they were very beguiling, and a lot of the men sort of fell in love with them. So of course, everybody thought they were witches, <laughs> and uh, they were drowned. Yeah, this isn't spoilers, this is basically like the setup for the book. So that's like the history of the book. They were drowned and then ever since then there's a curse on the town where every, at the beginning of every summer, the three girls take over the bodies of three local girls in the town and then use those bodies to drown boys from the town in modern day. So that's kind of the plot. And then there's the main girl, which is like in the modern day and she sort of falls for this new guy that comes to town, but they kind of have to figure out how to solve this curse. It's just really good. I feel like I'm not explaining it that well, but just trust me, if you really like 
moody settings, ruggedy ocean creepiness. Like I said, tragic romance. I cannot recommend this book enough. It's so good. It's so good. And it's a pretty quick, fairly easy read. Like, I mean, just in that it's so good that you will just breeze through it. I think I read it in like two nights or something. But yeah, since I've already read it and love it, I can definitely highly recommend this. Oh, <laughs> and funny story. I posted about this on my Instagram and somebody that I went to high school with responded to my Instagram story and was like, hey, do you remember so-and-so people that were like about our age that lived in our town growing up? And I was like, oh no, I, they went to a different high school. So I was like, I don't think I knew them. And she was like, well, turns out their sister-in-law is the author of this book. <laughs> She's like, that's so random. That's what happens when you live in Oregon, I guess. But I was like, listen, if you ever see them, tell them to tell their sister-in-law that I really loved her book because it was really good. <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. I don't usually give like star ratings to books because I'm terrible at rating things, but that one would definitely be a five star. The next one that I have to recommend to you will also be a five star. And that is The Witching Year by Diana Helmuth. And this is a memoir and it's written by a woman who decided to try witchcraft for a year. And it's just like her true experience of trying to research witchcraft, figure out the history of it, start to practice it, start to get involved in groups and do rituals and spells. And it's set up like it's broken up by month and then it has like the different days in within the month. And it's not one entry for every day. Sometimes it like skips days. But I really, really loved this book. I love to read witchy memoirs. So one of my favorite genres of memoir is people who practice witchcraft or go through a journey of witchcraft in their life and then write their story about it. I just think it's really interesting and I love stuff about witchcraft. And this is maybe one of the best ones I've read, partly because it's really relatable, especially if you are not really into witchcraft or you don't really believe in witchcraft or, you know, maybe you're on the fence about it. This book is very much from the perspective of a skeptical non-believer kind of going into it like, I just want to try this thing. I want to see like why this is a, such a big growing religion or belief system. And throughout the book, she's very honest, you know, she does things. Sometimes it seems like maybe they work or maybe she has an experience and sometimes it doesn't. And I just love the really like straightforward down to earth tone. She's, like I said, very relatable, especially if you are like a millennial aged woman. I feel like I, <laughs> there were a lot of passages or ways that she described things that I was like, yes. <laughs> so I marked one to read to you. The context for this is she's talking about the ethical issues with crystals. Like crystals are a really popular thing in witchcraft and in many spiritual belief systems. People really love crystals today and use them for lots of things, but there can be a lot of ethical issues because of mining and where the crystals come from and how there's no really like regulations for crystals or mining crystals like there are with diamonds and that kind of thing. So this is the quote. I was raised on Captain Planet and Fern Gully. You can't tell 90s kids to trust the pinky swear of a mine owner. I was like, yeah. So I feel like if you kind of grew up in that era, like the 90s, then you will especially relate to her just like the way that she writes and the way that she perceives the world. And I just love that it was so honest, so straightforward, really approachable. If you aren't really into actual witchcraft, but you're just interested in knowing something about it, some of the history of it, I would really, really recommend picking up this book. It's just so entertaining too. It's funny. I laughed. I cried. I had such a good time reading this and I hope you will give it a shot. Okay, the next couple books will go maybe a little more quickly because I don't have anything to say about them specifically because I haven't read them yet. But most of these, one is a new book that just came out recently, but the other three were just on my list when I went through my huge list of books and was like, this one seems witchy, this one seems witchy. So the next one is The Once and Future, which is by Alex E. Harrow, or Harrow, I still am not sure how to pronounce that. I once again really, really love this cover. I love that it's sort of cut roughly. I don't know if you can see that, but the paper is really good texture and the edges of the pages are all cut unevenly, which just makes it feel more, I don't know, witchy, I guess. And I decided to go with this one because it sounds really good, but also I read Starling House by Alex E. Harrow 
this, was that earlier this year or last year? Anyway, fairly recently and I loved that book. So I figured it was definitely worth picking up another one of their books because I really loved that previous book by them. So this one is about sort of modern times in 1893 and at that point there is no such thing as witches. Like people don't really believe in witches anymore. They don't think it's a thing that exists. Um, but it is around the time of the women's rights movement and a group of sisters who are joining the suffragist movement begin to pursue the forgotten words in ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement, it says. Stalked by shadows and sickness, hunted by forces who will not suffer a witch to vote, and perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. And I love the tagline here. It says, there's no such thing as witches, but there will be. <laughs> so this one sounds really good. A few of these are kind of like, not full witch books, but have some witchiness in them or some kind of magic. So I'm excited to see where this one goes. And I love that it is set in like the very real time period and movement of the suffragist era. And I am really excited to see how witchcraft fits into that within the context of this book, because one of the things that you will come across a lot, especially if you read more non-fictional books on witchcraft, actually even in this memoir that I read, it talks about it, is that witchcraft is very tightly intertwined with feminism and with politics. And you really can't practice witchcraft without being embroiled in those kinds of movements. I mean, technically you can, but a lot of witches come from a place of wanting to change things, wanting to change the status quo, wanting to make the world a safe place for everybody. So I really like that contextually, this combines the suffragist movement with witchiness or witchcraft, and I'm excited to see how they combine. I'm trying to decide which one to start next, but it might be this one. Okay, up next, we have a new book that just recently came out, and that is The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. I saw this one at a bookstore and I had to pick it up because the cover is beautiful, but also the lavender lilac sprayed edges are just, I could not resist that. And I got this at a local bookshop here called Pegasus Books, which is a really awesome comics and bookstore. And I just was browsing and I had to buy this one. And also I had heard it recommended by, I think Desi recommended on her channel trying to remember, but a couple people I saw read this and they liked it. And so this is another one that is not specifically witchcraft, but it's more magic based. It's kind of more of like a fantasy book, but with magic. So I don't think they really refer to her as a witch, the main character, whose name is Kiela. Kayla, but she's a librarian and her assistant is a magically sentient spider plant, <laughs> which is amazing because spider plants are like one of the best ones. They're one of the few that I can easily keep alive inside even though I have very few good places to put plants where they will get like sun and all the things they need. Um, so I love a good spider plant. And basically there's a revolution, the library that she works at burns and she escapes with all the spell books from the library and she kind of returns to her childhood home. And of course there is a very handsome and nosy neighbor. So you know there's gonna be a little bit of romance. And she starts making jam to support herself, but it sounds like she combines magic and like the spells with the jam. So the jams like do magical things, which I love that. I feel like this is gonna be so cozy. The end of the description on the book flap says, like a hallmark rom-com full of mythical creatures and fueled by cinnamon rolls and magic, the spell shop will heal your heart and feed your soul. So I'm very much looking forward to reading that. Like I said, I feel like this is gonna be super cozy. Some of these not as cozy, some of them are very cozy. Like. I think the next three are gonna be pretty cozy. Once in Future Witch is probably not. The Witching Year was great, but not cozy. And then The Wicked Deep was definitely not cozy, but I definitely wanted to throw in some more easy read, cozy read books. So I'm really glad this one is in my TBR this month. Okay, and then up next we have what looks to be sort of your typical romancy type book. I mean, if you look at this cover, this is like what romance book covers look like now. So, and it is called Playing the Witch Card by KJ Delantonia. Mm. K 
cute little cover. It says three generations of magic, two rogue X's, one tarot deck, the perfect recipe for chaos. So I'm not gonna like read the whole description on the back, but basically the main character, Flair, leaves her cheating husband and takes over her grandmother's Kansas bakery. But her grandmother also had a fortune telling side hustle. So there's like tarot involved, but she doesn't want to be involved with that, with like the magic tarot part. She's just taking over the bakery part, but her daughter's really obsessed with magic. So of course things go awry. <laughs> yeah, I picked this one up because it just seems like it's going to be a real light hearted sort of read. Got some romance in there. You got some magic in there, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of her trying to figure everything out and a bakery, never hurts to have a bakery thrown in. I feel like a lot of books have bakery and magic stuff. Actually, even The Wicked Deep, one of the friends of the main girl, her mom runs a bakery, like a cake shop where she makes cakes that she thinks like will help people forget bad memories. So there's always a little bit of magic in with baking, I feel like, and I love that in a book. So that was part of what drew me to this as well. All right, and then the last book that we have is just a classic cozy mystery, but it is a witch themed mystery. And cozy mysteries are one of my favorite genres. Uh, if you've been following me here for a while, you probably know that. I feel like I started reading them super early on, like so long ago before they were really well known as a genre, really before people were reading them a lot. I'm really glad they seemed to have gained popularity recently, like in the last several years, because I just want more of them and there's a giant squirrel climbing on the tree outside. <laughs> anyway, I will read like almost any cozy mystery, but bonus points if it involves books, plants, cute animals, especially cats, and magic. So this has multiple of those things. And this one also takes place in Oregon. So you know I had to pick that one up. Sometime I should just do a T-bar of all books that are based in Oregon. <laughs> it says librarian Josie, so librarians, so we have the books element. Librarian Josie Way moved to small town Oregon to lay low. Instead, thanks to newfound magic abilities, there's the magic, and a killer on the loose, she's leapt out of the frying pan and into a cauldron of trouble. Yeah, she worked the Library of Congress, which is really cool, and then moved to Oregon. And the library in the town she moved to is in a Victorian mansion. Is this my perfect book? I think it might be. And she learned she's descended from a long line of witches. So really what more do you need to know? There is a cat on the cover. So I'm guessing she probably has a cat. I feel like every cozy mystery, the main character has some kind of pet and usually they will put an image of it on the cover. So I feel like the fact that there's a black cat on the cover means that she probably has a cat. So that has all the things, magic, Oregon, a cat, a library in a Victorian mansion. <laughs> I was like, yes, buy, buy this one, buy this right now. <laughs> and this is by Angela M. Sanders. Actually, you know what? I think I might read this one next. I just am really excited about it. And I feel like Once in Future Witches is gonna be more of like a serious read. It's longer. And I just finished the memoir, which was a little more of a serious read. It's not like serious, it's entertaining and humorous, but like, you know, it's not just like the easiest, coziest romp that you've ever been on. So I think I might pick up this one next to give myself a little bit of a break before I jump back into some of the bigger books. So yeah, that's the last one I have on my TBR. I think I'm gonna finish this video and then go read it right now. <laughs> like I said, I have a couple other books, but I mentioned them in previous videos. So if you're interested in what I had on my TBR last year or the year before, I will link those two videos down below and you can go check them out and maybe find some other witchy books to read. Let me know if you have read any witchy themed books or magic themed books lately that you thought were really, really good. I am always looking for new ones in that category. During September, I do my whole TBR that theme, but all year round I tend to read books with that theme also. So I'm always looking for more recommendations. So please let me know down in the comments if you have any specific ones that you love. And also let me know if there were any of these ones that you thought looked especially good. Or if you've read any of these ones, the ones I haven't read yet, and that might prioritize what order I pick them up in. So that is gonna be all for this video. If you wanna follow me on 
Instagram, you can find me at House Beyond the Hedge over there. If you want to come play cozy video games with me on Twitch, it's at Trusty Parasol. And starting this month, we will be playing only autumnal or spooky themed games for September and October. So if that sounds like something that you would enjoy, come check that out. And it's always fun to just hang out and have people in the chat there. And I have a really big TJ Maxx haul that I need to film as well. So that will probably be next week's video. And then I am going on a photography retreat thing this weekend. So there'll probably be a video for that too. So yeah, if any of those things sound like something you might be interested in, please like and subscribe and stick around. I'm gonna try and do more Halloween content, maybe some Halloween decorating, maybe a little more Halloween hunting. I know we're sort of at the end of that season, but there's some stores that I still haven't had time to go to yet. I haven't been to Target to check. I haven't been to Michael's since they put out like all their collections. I haven't been to World Market yet, which had really, really good stuff this year. So I definitely wanna try and get there before all their Halloween stuff is gone. So hopefully we'll be able to fit more Halloween content in coming up. So I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe if you think that you would like to see more of my content. And always remember to keep the kettle warm because I will see you next time.